Good day everybody, thank you for joining Cyberspace Games in the Superhero Package tutorial. This section is actually going to be explaining the powers and tags. Alright, so what we're going to go ahead and do, go to your Superhero Assets and Prefabs and choose the Powers folder. What we see here is we have a Blast Attack. That's what we added on our character here. And you know what, I'm actually going to show you one thing first. Go to your mechanism here. And go to your players and and just choose one of these doesn't matter which one it's going to be the same thing for each of them because oh, these rules are going to apply for each of them and what you'll see here is we have our animations here this is how we'll know what attacks that our player actually has each controller also you can see in their controller scripts which um which attacks they have and what you can see here shield that is a one of the attack prefabs, one of the power prefabs that we had. See here, shield, and also blast is blast attack. That's what that is, that's blast attack. And you can see two of them here. This is just the animation here. What it is is um, him lifting his hand and shooting a blast out of it. So this is the right hand and this is the left hand. And the shield, let me go ahead and let's go to our shield here actually explain this in the character setup. Um, this is just a force that blows that blows your character that blows rigid bodies away from him. And let's go ahead and choose on that. My explosion here. And you can see here is it just has a radius of how far it will actually affect the game objects um, around it. And this is the actual force itself. So if you have it high, it's going to be really big for us. Um, not that high, it's going to be low for us. And this is just, it's going to be there for two and a half seconds, and then it's going to destroy the explosion. So, and it's just a particle emitter here. So your particle emitter, and you can, you can adjust this to be however you want it to be. One shot, this means it's going to, uh, it's going to spawn the particles once, and then it's done. If you have it, unclicked it's going to spawn them over and over like a flame so that's all there is to that explosion with the blast attack here let me explain this explosion or this prefab here a little better it's the bullet prefab for the blast for your either your superhero or your witch and what this one has here it's a rigid body it's a projectile and as i was saying before it depends on which hell script you have what you find it to be i actually have a few more here um you can have these at whatever uh, tag you want them to be. The only difference is their colors. So that's why I have these different because their colors are different. This one is um, orange. This one is kind of a pinkish, purplish color for the witch. And then this one is a green color. Just another extra one I added in here. Okay. And with that one too, with the blast attack here. You'll see it has a shoot force. This is just how fast it's going to shoot the blast out of there. So you can have it low if you don't want to go fast at all, or higher if you want to go really fast. The shoot position here. That's actually go ahead and go to our scene here. That's where I told you to set it in front with him. Like you know how to say chest high and arms aimed out because you want it to give the effect that it's coming out of his hand. So that's the shoot position. That's where the prefab will be spawning from. And you want this to be facing forward, because <clears throat> the shoot force is going to come out forward on this axis here. Okay. So that's the blast attack, and that is your shield. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to explain the telekinesis now. Go into your, or you know, let's get this one here, the same thing. Um, what you'll see here is active. You can have it on active, and all that means is it's working all the time. Um, I'd rather have it on mouse click so it could be a controlled power. And, you know, let me go ahead and select the one that's actually here in our character. Okay, there we go. You can see this green wire sphere around here. That's going to be your distance, and that's just how far around the telekinesis that it will pick up objects. So anything within this wire sphere it will have effect on as long as it has a rigid body and is tagged as telekinetic. And 
you can change this to whatever you want to be tokenated. It'll work on it as long as it has the original value. Alright, and the speed is just a strength of your force. And you can actually adjust this in game by using the mouse wheel and the drag of the objects and the ang angular drag of the objects are just going to be the drag and angular drag of the objects that you're actually exploding. Alright. So that's your telekinesis here. And let's see here. There was one more attack that I actually did not set up. I probably should have set this one up at least without explaining it. I should have set it up. Let's go ahead and go to it. Teleport here is going to be a transform, so let's go ahead and just create an empty game object. And let's set that as our teleport. And let's go ahead and press play on our scene. You'll see if you press T, it'll teleport to that game object. No matter where you are, it'll always teleport to that game object. And a better way I like to do is to set it on the character so it follows him. Say if you want to teleport in the same spot in front of him every time. You're just going to want to reset the transform and let's see, let's set it that far in front of him. And now wherever you move it will always be that far in front of him. So from this way it's not going to go back to that spot. It's going to keep on going further out. And no, that's not it glitching. That's me teleporting. So that's pretty much how you set the teleport, which is really simple, which is why I didn't explain it, because um, I wanted to leave that for all the powers here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain the health and why it has to have certain tags on your character, depending on what health it is. So let's see here, he has a superhero, he actually has health with no number after it, and like I said, it doesn't matter if it's on the superhero or the witch or the fighter. Just make sure you have the right tags for your right health kits. And I'm going to go ahead and show you what I mean. Let me choose health here. And you see here, if it enters a, if it enters this trigger collider with a tag of punch through, blast through, kick through, it will take health away right here. And the reason it has to be certain tags is you don't want your tag to take health away. See here, we have health with no number after it. You won't see any attack with no number after it in the script because you don't want to be affected by those certain tags. So same thing with your health 1. You won't see any attacks with 1 after it. Health 2, you won't see any attacks with 2 after it. And that's pretty much why they have to have certain tags on them. Um, you'll eventually get used to them, or, you know, get the hang of them. Um, the health is obviously going to be the attacks, but no number in the health 1 is obviously going to be the attacks with 1 after them. See the ones here with 3, that's actually the enemies tags and I will explain that when I get into the extra AI setup. So if you're interested in that, there's going to be a video on that one. And here you'll see the health. That's actually on all of the health scripts except for the enemy. So you don't want him to pick up health. He's not a player. And unless you do want him to pick up health, you can always just add that in there. Just get that right in there. Just go from break all the way up to case health or to case and then just copy that and put it in your enemy health script and then you'll be able to pick up health here. But um, with these, I'm going to go ahead and get the health script. What it is, is if you enter that collider um, trigger with that tag, it'll increase your life by 100. So that's how the health works on them. Like I said, all the enemies have, or all the players have them. The enemy doesn't have any of them, or doesn't have the health, but you can add it if you want. Alright, and that concludes this video. In the next video, that's the extra video I was talking about, about setting up your AI. And this package actually doesn't focus on the AI, so it's really simple. You can modify it any way you want. Um, it's real, like I said, it's really simple, so it's not going to be the best AI. Um, you can change it and make it better. So, just join us in the next video if you're interested in that.